been more frustration this week at the failure of the National Prosecuting Authority to meet its own deadline to make a decision about whether it will prosecute the people accused of killing the Craddock Four in 1985. Those who killed the four men did not apply for amnesty under the Truth Commission, but there's been no prosecution, while the NPA has also failed to prosecute other people who are known to have committed murders during apartheid. You know how many cases like this they are. Yasmin Sukha is a leading human rights lawyer, executive director of the Foundation for Human Rights in South Africa, also a trustee of the Desmond Tutu Peace Center and played an important role herself during the Truth Commission. Ma'am, good afternoon to you and thank you for your time. We have public pressure on the National Prosecuting Authority. Still, they may miss their own deadline to make a decision. They don't even tell the family there'll be another delay in making a decision about whether to prosecute the people who killed the Craddock Four. How do you feel about the NPA's actions here, or lack of action? Thank you, Stephen, and good afternoon to your listeners. I think that, um, you know, I was really glad that the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee really dug in his heels today on questioning the NPA on the way in which they mishandled the TRC cases. But I was quite shattered to hear that um, they're still not in a position to make a decision. And I think for the families, each day that passes is, you know, obviously an obstruction of justice for them because it also lessens the likelihood that they're going to see any justice during the lifetimes of the widows of the Craddock Four. Um, I, you know, we, we sat down with them in 2019. And at that point, we provided a list of witnesses um, whom they should interview. We also gave them a really good sense of what the parameters of the case was. And of course, when we received the documentation from them, um, I think last week, it showed that there'd actually been no investigation or follow up of the leads. And one has to ask the question, um, you know, do they want more people to die before they actually make decisions and deal with these cases? It was also not reassuring to hear the NDPP's almost throwaway remark where she said that, um, you know, as hard as we try and we will continue to work with the families, but the reality is that not many of these cases will see a prosecution. And that's devastating for the families because this is such a generalized comment without any kind of reference to the evidence that is available that really, I think for many families, this is almost the final nail in the coffin, one could say. And of course, when I heard Advocate Rodney de Kock, who's in charge of the special unit, he made the point that while we will just send these matters to inquest, inquests, you know, are a preliminary step that you do to determine um, you know, whether or not there are sufficient facts or whether there's enough of an evidentiary basis to prosecute. I would argue that in the Craddock Four, there's no real need for another inquest. We've had two inquests before. What we really need to do is to interview the surviving alleged perpetrators so that we can come to some finality on this case and make a decision to indict. And that would go for many, many of the other cases as well. So I think today's hearings were really not reassuring. And certainly for victims, they're incredibly dissatisfied. Um, it would seem to me, and I'm by no means the first person to say this, that the NPA's lack of action here, I mean, from 1994, I think the NPA was created in 1996, to 2021, I mean, is deliberate. I mean, you know, there's been talk of a deal. I don't think there's any other explanation. And I know Vusi Bacoli, a former, advocate Bacoli, a former head of the NPA, has put this on affidavit. He was told not to prosecute these cases. Do you believe it was deliberate? I can't see any other explanation, a deliberate inaction to prosecute these cases. Well, certainly the um, full, you know, the full bench in the case of the appeal in the Rodrigues matter came to that conclusion. And in fact, um, pointed out that even if the executive had taken a decision to suppress investigations and prosecutions, there is a question around the NPA's conduct and its own obligations in terms of the Constitution. And what the full bench did say is that 
these are facts which should be investigated by the NPA itself in terms of who was implicated or who colluded with the decision not to investigate and that those people identified should be dealt with in terms of section 41, the NPA Act. Now, as you know, that, was, that decision came in 2019. And in fact, we communicated with the head of the NPA and we said, what are you actually going to do about this? Because you really need to ensure that in fact, the team that you have around you are people who are committed to making sure that justice happens for the victims. And at that point, her response was, I will wait for the SEA decision. Well, that decision came out earlier this year. And of course, in the time between then and now, nothing much has happened. And of course, when this issue came up, um, I think Deputy Minister John Jeffrey said he didn't know anything about a deal. I think the whole point is that Advocate Gusipi Kohli said in his affidavit that he, in fact, when you look at the reason why he was suspended, it was because he decided to do his job and to, in fact, investigate and indict. The fact that nothing happened after that points to a really important decision that the executive decided that these cases would not be investigated and prosecuted. Now, that needs to be investigated because this is a 23-year period which has seriously prejudiced the rights of victims. You know, and I've been on your program before, how many alleged perpetrators have died in the period since then. And with each day's passing, the whole point of justice becomes absolutely remote for the families of victims. And that is why we've also said that it's really important to have a commission of inquiry to investigate both the executive's conduct but also that of the NPA and the Hawks. Because if we don't get to the bottom of this, then we could have another hearing in Parliament next year on exactly the same basis, where the NPA will obfuscate and they will give us no real reasons for why they have not carried out their jobs in terms of their constitutional obligations. And you know, as the chairperson of the committee pointed out, he referenced the preamble of the constitution you know, the whole question of honoring those who gave up their lives so that we could have freedom in South Africa. I would argue that the way in which the NPA and the state have acted, this is a complete mockery of all of those ideals. Yasmin Sukat, ma'am, I really appreciate the time on Newsfeed. Thank you very much indeed. Important comments there.